Good morning, everyone. I'm delighted to welcome you to a new episode of our virtual lecture series, organized within the framework of the Research and Innovation for Cities and Citizens, RE4C2 project. This initiative serves as a platform where researchers and experts from the EC2U Alliance foster the development of fresh ideas in cutting-edge topics related to innovation. The sixth edition of the virtual lecture series is hosted by the University of Salamanca. On this occasion, we will be diving on innovation in agriculture, Agriculture 4.0. The aim of this session is to examine the impact of technologies such as artificial intelligence, big data, and the Internet of Things on the evolution of agriculture, fostering the optimization of agricultural productivity. This represents a new paradigm of the digital agriculture founded on intelligent data analysis throughout the supply chain. It promotes precision agriculture, transforming it into a smart agriculture, providing farmers with precise real-time information to support decision-making. Before we embark on this journey, let me take a moment to express my gratitude to Salamanca Institute team, especially Jorge and Ricardo, without whom this webinar would have not been possible. And we want, of course, uh, to express our gratitude to our speakers for their collaboration. Today we have four great professionals. Thanks, Diego, Luis Enrique, Raul and Oscar for joining us today. I'm sure that it, it is going to be a pleasure to uh, listen to you and to learn from you. Having said that, let's get started. Our first speaker is uh, Diego Lopez Aguilera, Professor Diego Lopez Aguilera. He is a well-known expert in the fields of cartographic engineering, geodesy and photogrammetry. His expertise is concentrated in photogrammetry and computer vision. Currently, currently sorry, he holds the position of director of the master's degree and doctoral program in geotechnologies. He leads the uh, TIDOP research group focusing on the utilization of geospatial information in the realms of, of renewable energy, new materials and industrial research. With over 200 co-authored articles, his research has been published in high-impact scientific journals. In 2015, the Spanish Royal Academy of Engineers acknowledged the significant contribution of his work to the, advantage, the advancement of knowledge. Uh, Diego, it's your turn. Thank you so much for the introduction. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. It is a pleasure for me and for my team to present today the last advance with new technologies, uh, new, let's say, developments in, in the field of agriculture. So first of all, I would like to, let's say, highlight the question about technologies, drones and satellites, and are they really useful? So this is uh, the main thread of my presentation today. So I prepared this outline, I would like First, to start saying a few words about our research unit that is key to success in order to develop all these technologies. Next, I would like to introduce some uh, important information about the pillars of our technology that are the platforms and sensors. And for sure, the most interesting part of my presentation, the applications, especially those close to market applications that uh, different companies are exploiting and institutions nowadays. And I will finalize my presentation with, uh, as always, the net challenge and future perspective together with the conclusions. So uh, a few words about the research unit. It is important to highlight the, the scale of this research unit. It's around more than uh, 75 researchers involved in different uh, thematic fields, not only agriculture, but today we are going to focus our attention in agriculture. The main important milestone, of course, is the foundation of the research unit in 2005. The name of this research unit is TIDOP. 
But also it's important to note that in 2014, we funded a spin-off. A spin-off is a startup company that allow us to accelerate those prototypes developed by the, the research unit that are close to market with more potential. And last but not least, an important milestone of this research unit, it was in 2017 with the foundation of an international scientific journal currently indexed in the best uh, database that is well known in the scientific community and the name is drones. That is going to be uh, an important main threat for, for the talk today. So together with that, uh, it is important to highlight as well the number of patents and the intellectual properties registered in, in the group that allow us to provide this uh, technology transfer to companies. And of course, the collaboration with different institutions, public and private, that allow us to accelerate uh, the products. Um, apart from that, what makes us different as our research unit is our technology transfer, the capability to develop some solution, especially software adapted to the client, adapted to the different companies and institutions that are claiming for solutions. So we are able to develop different tools, different components using geospatial data coming from different sensors as we are going to see in a few minutes. So the key to success uh, pass through, develop this solution adapted to the client and of course, to use different geotechnologies, as you can see in the slide, we are dealing with different drones. Uh, it is important to note that drones are not only aerial platforms. We can also work with terrestrial drones or even subaquatic drones that are very, very useful for localizing objects or whatever aspect related with the water. Um, in general, we are able to develop solutions. We are able to adapt this solution to the client. And the most important thing, we are able to create products. This means to create something that can be useful in the market. And this is not uh, really uh, easy to be done from the university. So in this point, the, the spin-off is crucial to get success. And in general, the, the spin-off uh, is able to put in the market some product related with the automat uh, automotive se sector, that is the car, the vehicles, the, the industrial 4.0, the energetic field. But of course, today uh, we are going to focus our attention in those products uh, close to the agriculture. And, and this product means the hydrology, this product means the, 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 the application of software for solution uh, related with agriculture, with crops, and so on. This product uh, uh, named Revela Duero and Hydromap, and we are going to, to present in a few minutes. Before that, I would like to say a few words about the main pillars of our technology that are platforms and sensors. As you can see in the slide, the platforms can be aerial, of course, terrestrial, but in agriculture, to provide an aerial point of view is very, very useful for, for the end user. On the left, you can see a, a multi rotor drone, and on the right, you can see a fixed wing drone. The main difference between them um, is the autonomy. So the, the first one uh, has less autonomy than the second one. So depending on the application, depending on the type of uh, crop and the station that should be covered, we uh, will decide it about a multi-rotor or fixed wind. Uh, together with these platforms, of course, we need to put on board different sensors. This is important and crucial, especially those sensors that provide, uh, let's say, the possibility to record the crops, to record the, the agriculture with a different wavelength. This means to record and to obtain information in a spectrum different for the visible spectrum that the human eye can provide. So in this case, we can deal with different multispectral, hyperspectral cameras. Of course, we can use different active sensors like LIDAR or laser 
so we can analyze the crop through time. This is important to be highlighted because we are able to monitorize the different crops, the different state of the plant, provide different vegetation indices. So this is crucial as we are going to know in a few minutes with the different applications. Okay, let's move on to the application. Let, let's move on to the actions and let's move on to those projects, those prototypes that demonstrate the capability of the group to provide a final solution and even to put in the market this solution. The first one is Revela Duero. Revela Duero is a product that is being exploited by the Hydrographical Confederation. In, in Spain, and the main goal is to provide a tool for controlling the water resources destined for irrigation activity. This means that the satellite, in this case we are going to use satellites, are able to provide a monitorize of the different crops and are able to say the confederation which crops are using the irrigation services without the correct regulation. And this is very important uh, considering the, the water resources that we can uh, have uh, nowadays. And, and it is important to provide a tool in order to, to control all these resources for the confederation. So in this case, as you can see in the slide, we are going to cover in an automatic way with satellite the different regions of the hydrographical region of, uh, in this case, uh, the Duero Confederation is covering with satellite images the different regions. And we are going to provide in an automatic way, this is very important to be noted, a sheet with the different crops, with the different vegetation indices, and with a priorization of those crops that are using these irrigation services illegally. This is important to be noted. So with this sheet, with this cartographic information, the fluvial war can provide a more efficient control of the parcels that are using these resources. This is important to be noted. In the same line, but using, in this case, drones, because we need more resolutions, we are able to create Hydromap. Hydromap is a web GIS tool. That means that everything is going to be executed on the cloud to control residuals along the rivers. And this is important also for confederation, because sometimes they need to obtain some cartographic product that allow them to geolocalize those residuals, those elements that are very important to be clean, to be maintained in terms of uh, provide a good maintenance of, of the different, uh, let's say, streams. So to this end, we integrate artificial intelligence. We integrate the artificial intelligence together with drones in order to detect those elements, in this case, the woody debris, that are the, the main residuals that the Confederation uh, was concerned, and to provide a geolocation of these elements along the river. This is very, very important to be noted. Okay, moving to more, let's say, close detail. Uh, in Spain, we are very, very let's say, concern about some crops that provide uh, an exploitation in different crops, different types of crops that are really, really impor important from an economical point of view. We are talking about the vineyards. Eh? It's very important to provide tools for prevention and also predictive capabilities. In this case, the pest detection, the green mosquito that we are able to detect, integrating multispectral cameras, visible cameras, of course, using drones, in this case, Binger requires uh, a higher scale, a better scale, a spatial resolution, and thus we need drones, are able to detect, as you can see in the slide, the different pathologies related with the green mosquito. In particular, we are able to detect this, let's say, uh, full off of the, of, the, of the different yields. And with this cartography, we are able to locate 
with very high accuracy those pathologies, the green mosquito pathologies, along the, the vineyards, and we are able to isolate the areas in order to apply prevention measures for this pest detection in vineyards. Of course, another important problem related with uh, the vineyard is the water stress. So, integrating again drones together with thermographical cameras, we are able to estimate the water stress from a relative, relative point of view. We are able to isolate those areas that are suffering this water stress. And the most important thing, we are able to say the end user, okay, these areas are suffering this water stress and you need to apply a specific treatment. Of course, another important application is the harvest seed application. With these drones, we are able to locate and geolocate those areas that need a specific treatment, a specific harvest seed application. We are able to apply an adaptive uh, herbicide application in the crops. And this means that we are able to reduce the contaminants. We are able to reduce the emissions that sometimes affect uh, the crops and in general the agriculture. So we can combine drones together with sensor to provide these services in real time. I would like to end my presentation with the next challenge, the the future perspectives. Uh, of course, that we are living nowadays with a democratization of the artificial intelligence. So the capability to integrate artificial intelligence together with the geospatial big data allow us to provide the prediction capability to the end user, the prediction of the yield. And this is very important. It's not easy at all, okay, because we need to combine a lot of information. We need to codify the informal knowledge coming from the end user uh, using artificial intelligence. But in the end, we can provide this type of prediction analysis. And last but not least, another important challenge is the possibility to monitorize and analyze the subsoil. I would like to highlight today that this subsoil is sometimes unknown in agriculture. So the possibility to incorporate geophysical sensors in drones that are able to analyze the subsoil are crucial for the best success for the agriculture, the best success for our crops. We are talking about the determination of the nutrients, the humidity of the subsoil, and different parameters that are crucial for our agriculture. So I would like to end with the conclusions. First of all, and coming back to my question, drones and satellites complement each other, and unused are useful for agriculture, of course, but we need to move forward and provide some solution to the end users, as we are going to say in the last conclusions. The second one is that drones and satellites do not reply the field war, but minimize them. Of course, with, let's say, an easy effort, we can provide a final solution in agriculture. So we can say that sometimes the, the services that we can provide in agriculture are low cost, and this is important to be highlighted. Of course, the integration of artificial intelligence and big data provide these predictive capabilities in agriculture, very demanding from the end user. And the last conclusion, and in my opinion, this is the most important one, the key to success, I mean, the connection of this technology with the rural areas, with the agriculture, with the end user, pass through developing a geospatial innovation platform that allow the end user to use this type of services and technology. Thank you. Thank you very much, Diego, for sharing with us these interesting contributions of uh, your research group. It is amazing what uh, technology, well-used technology, can offer one of our priority economic sectors. So thank you very much. Our second speaker is uh, Dr. Uh, Luis Enrique Corredera. Luis Enrique Corredera is actually director of the Risk Advisory Innovation Center at Deloitte, Spain. 
He is skilled in the fields of cybersecurity, digital forensics, blockchain, and software engineering. He performed as expert witness for many multinational companies from different sectors. He has a long experience in innovation, leading the design, development, and business strategy of several innovative products for digital certification, and helps his clients to develop and leverage technology to improve their business. Luis Enrique Corredera obtained extraordinary award for his graduate studies in computer science in 2004 in Universidad Pontificia de Salamanca, and he qualified with honors on his doctorate studies in empirical software engineering and process improvement in 2013. Uh, before listening to uh, Luis Enrique, let's uh, watch a short video.
Thank you for having me today. Thank you also for your kind introduction, Chabela. Uh, well, I'm delighted to, to be here today to talk to you about uh, an experience that joins uh, traceability, blockchain, artificial intelligence, and one of the best things in the world, which is Iberian ham. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to talk to you about the, the context that triggered this, this, uh, this project, this experience, uh, how we approach it, and the value that, that, we, be, uh, that we were able to, to deliver. Uh, well, Iberian ham market is a very good opportunity because it's a mix of, of situations in which uh, they are uh, high uh, value products like Iberian hams. Uh, for instance, this, this January in Rotterdam, you, you were able to, to buy an Iberian ham at only 339 euros per kilogram, which is a very, very high value. Uh, there's a lot. There have been a lot of fraud on the of the market. Uh, many many companies, many many news uh, with the, the the media about uh, fraud, uh, counterfeiting of, of products, etc. And in the in the marketplace, there are big producers that are trying to commoditize a high value, high added value product. And on the other hand, there are uh, high highest quality producers uh, are trying to differentiate because uh, they, they apply practices that are uh, over the, the regulation and that they, they think that they are uh, key differentiation, uh, differentiation uh, practices for, for the products to be, to be the best in the, in the market and they want to be transparent uh, regarding that practices. So we started uh, facing the, the traceability of the Birmingham and, and uh, taking into consideration that there is a lot of information already, uh, but that information exists in isolated silos of information that don't talk to each other. And it's very difficult to, to keep it uh, together, to, to be able to create a chain of information uh, about the value chain of the, of the product. Okay, so, uh, uh, well, there's a lot of new technology that makes allows us to uh, to do things easier than than before, like Internet of Things, uh, biometrics, uh, robotics, process automation, etc. Uh, that blockchain, a technology that that provides us uh, security and trustworthy about the the information, is uh, making things even safer, and uh, we have a. Uh, uh, low cost uh, tools and, and no relational databases and many many advances in the in the data space that allows us to be more flexible and adapt our adapt the, the the technology and the needs to the requirements of the operating context and of course don't, don't forget it we have to focus it on on business because uh, innovation on its own uh, in the in the real world in the world of, of companies uh, is, is not enough. Uh, well, uh, once we we know what to what we want to to get of it, we have to focus on which processes do we have we need to integrate then into the into the chain of value into the traceability, what services and what information, all that information that were in different silos, different companies, different participants in the chain. It's a really a very very talk uh, problem to, to face even with the, the best technology as uh, well. Uh, regarding the, the business focus, uh, there are many dimensions as well in which we can we can make an impact. Uh, it's worth to, to, to take into consideration the, the apparition of new operational models and process uh, re engineering. It's necessary sometimes that information that is in, in paper or information that is not uh, really uh, structured uh, needs to, to, be, to be incorporated to, uh, into a, a digital format and, and to harmonize it with other, with other sources of information, etc. And well, it's also important to be uh, transparent with consumers, key stakeholders around the around the the value chain and the supply chain, and of course the innovation of products. Today we are dreaming about uh, well, 
yesterday we were dreaming about being able to 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 get into the web page of uh, Iberian Ham uh, producer and uh, login uh, put a, an order and receive the Iberian Ham that they know that is the the taste that you want the point of salt that you want the level of 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 drying that you want it's very it's like a kind of science fiction that today is made possible by by the the combination of these of these technologies okay uh well from the technical uh, technological point of view it's also uh, a challenge and uh, well we we face that challenge uh, by by combining different uh, kinds of, of technologies and adapting it to the different levels of maturity that the players in the market uh, in the value chain uh, has because uh, well you you can have farmers farmers that uh, doesn't use at all a computer uh, but you can have industries that uh, have the, their own ERPs or SAP or, or many other many other uh, high technological products, and you have to be able to respond to the needs of uh, each of each of them. Well, regarding the process, we have uh, many 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 pro many many uh, uh, steps in the in the value chain. Uh, from reproduction, uh, the, the breeding mix, uh, in the Iberian ham it's important, the raciality of the father and the mother of the, of the, of the porks, of the pigs. And uh, well, re regarding the, the growth, it's important when you have the, the when you do the, the winning process and in the feeding, the, the mix that, uh, in what, uh, that is used, the, the recipes that are used to, uh, to produce the, the, the feed and, and the, the, the kinds of, of cereals that are used, as you probably have uh, saw in previously in the in the introduction video, and of course uh, wild feeding, uh, feeding with acorns, the the the, the green hams, which is uh, one of the key points of differentiation as well, and. No, it's important not to forget about the industrial process. Uh, what happens once we you transform the the pork in different legs and shoulders, uh, salt them, uh, mm, dry them, and many years later you transform them uh, into blisters of Iberian ham. Okay, it's a very long process. It's a very complex process, and in the end. You will have a blister with a QR code. You can scan with your with your mobile phone, and you can check all the information, all the history that is behind an Iberian ham. But also, uh, you can you can check, you can uh, evaluate uh, many many aspects of the product that you are consuming, like the, the color. Do you like the color or do you not? Uh, do you have the texture, the, the taste, uh, the, the smell? Okay, what is your overall satisfaction about the, the product? Five stars, four, three? Okay, so this information can be uh, gathered and also linked together uh, across all the information that you uh, gathered uh, alongside the, the supply chain. So you can know what uh, with enough data you can do advanced analytics and apply artificial intelligence to uh, determine what are the practices, uh, what are the different characteristics of the different pro processes that produce uh, the, the, the evaluations of, of different, different customers as well. And well, in the other hand, the industries have a lot of information together uh, about how the how the about the, the life of the of the product uh, in, uh, from end to end as well. That allows you to uh, reduce uh, mistakes uh, in the in the management. It allows you to to investigate uh, different different aspects of, of the production process and the and the impact that it produces. And well, it finally uh, increments the, the maturity of the of the industry. Okay, so well, uh, really, uh, this the, the impact that that the, this kind of progress produce uh, over the end on the brands is about marketing. Uh, it allows you to to have a more direct uh, 
um, contact with the, with the consumers uh, from the commercial point of view, differentiation from competition, uh, provide digital seals that ensure that there has been no no fraud on your product that allows you to transparent better practices than your competitors, etc. And to end uh, traceability and of course uh, the, the compliance with, with legal regulations, etc. And just to finish, simply as they will require you to, uh, next time you, you have the chance to, to scan a QR code on a blister of Iberian ham, Please do it because uh, you will have a, you will receive a lot of useful information that allows you to be a more informed kind of consumer. Uh, well, I think that's uh, that's all I have to to, to say. Uh, will be. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank I'm you sure too. that I'm not the only one here who loves jamón serrano, jamón ibérico. Huh? Uh, let me use jamón ibérico and not uh, Iberian ham because it it sounds of course. weird <laughs> for me. Weird. It seems like a different thing. So I love jamón serrano, jamón <laughs> ibérico. And uh, yeah. the important point is that uh, much uh, uh, much employment and wealth in Salamanca depends on this product. So any contribution to its advancement and improvement is welcome. So I commit you to keep on working on uh, on this sector. Um, our third uh, our third speaker is Raúl García Serrado. Raúl works as a project management officer at Air Institute, a research center where artificial intelligence, blockchain, robotics, and the Internet of Things are applied to various sectors such as industry, services, health, and education. He has extensive experience in the field of engineering, having been involved in projects related to the design, execution, supervision and maintenance of civil, industrial and environmental works. Currently, he is focused on entrepreneurship and new business models involving drones and in the hemp industry for industrial, food and health purposes. Uh, we have also a short video and we are uh, going to watch it before listening to Raul. Visita is a research group specializing in bioinformatics, intelligent computing systems and educational technology. We create solutions based on artificial intelligence and apply intelligent computing systems across different areas of research. We develop projects in the areas of cybersecurity, sentiment analysis, fintech, blockchain, Internet of Things, machine learning, smart cities, Industry 4.0 and Industry 5.0, bioinformatics, neuroscience, smart textiles, and many others. At Bicita, we seek to offer solutions to social problems and needs through research and the application of intelligent computing systems, artificial intelligence tools, which has allowed us to develop a wide range of technological solutions applicable to different fields, such as health, transportation, industry, the primary sector, commerce, banking, or education. Our objective is to bring value into society. Among other ways, we do that by creating robots, which use artificial intelligence to improve the quality of life of people with dementia. We have laboratories and research facilities, numerous dedicated teams, and our own data center. These facilities are equipped with all that is needed to carry out our research work at its best. We also coordinate events and international congresses related to our lines of research, manage several postgraduate and training programs, and collaborate in the development of projects with companies, universities, and research groups. Many distinguished visitors have seen our efforts and dedication to what we do, including the European Commissioner for Innovation, members of the European Parliament and the Vice President of the Spanish Government. At Pisita, we do not leave aside the development of educational technologies. In addition to master's degrees, specific training and massive open online courses, our experts have launched platforms such as e4u.org. And we have actively collaborated with the National Police in the Cyberwall Academy, an awareness-raising project for the general public in which hundreds of thousands of viewers have participated in its 2021-2022 edition. We are an international, dynamic and constantly evolving group of more than 150 researchers. The members of our staff 
are of more than 20 different nationalities and together we seek to develop the most innovative projects. And our success is evident with more than 130 national and international research projects underway. In addition, we are the leading promoters of the IoT Digital Innovation Hub. We are part of Digis3 and in recent years we have launched the Air Institute, a technology centre that gives us a greater ability to transfer our research to society. If we can help you in any way, or you have an idea to share, please do not hesitate to contact us. We are innovation, we are research, we are training, we are Visita. Hi everyone, uh, thank you Isabella for, for the presentation. Uh, in, this, in this presentation I want to, to talk about different projects that uh, we are involved in Visita Group and Air Institute and what are the, the objectives and the way to, to face them. First, uh, we, we can see the Visite Group, uh, the Bioinformatics Intelligent Computing System and Educational Technology from the USAL uh, brings together a group of research researchers mainly uh, interested in develop applications uh, from, from intelligent artifi artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, emo emotional system, uh, blockchain, IoT, Industry 4.0, and uh, the, the second group that is a <coughs> private non-profit research group uh, aimed to the promotion and develop scientific research of the, the same fields. Uh, the mainly fields are artificial intelligence, blockchain, and, and smart cities and EOT. Well, uh, the both groups are located in, in Salamanca. Uh, the first one, the Visite group, is located in, in ED, ED building from USAL and an Air Institute uh, located in an E building in Salamanca, uh, located in uh, Puente Ladrillo. Uh, we are more than 40 researchers in, in, in Air Institute. And well, uh, this is the, the the presentation of the group and the, the, new, the new building. Um, in Agriculture 4.0, uh, we have uh, different projects that, uh, um, that uh, are typical and, and the, the solutions are, are typical for all these projects. Uh, as we can see in this slide, uh, we have different uh, different practice uh, different categories uh, from cloud the first one is the cloud uh, refers to use uh, cloud service on data data storage the second one uh, is analytics uh, artificial intelligence uh, involves data analyze to optimize agricultural decisions and operations the cloud management uh, suggesting tools for, for efficient coordination and administration of cloud computing research. Uh, we have uh, the authentic authentication module uh, that is, is a secure authentication for controlling access to data and operating system, ensuring that only uh, authorized users can access uh, sensitive information. Uh, the oracles uh, with blockchain technology provide real-world data to blockchain, which could be critical for, for smart contracts. And, and the knowledge database repositories of crucial information from best agricultural practice to case studies and research fundings. Uh, this, this knowledge database uh, is provided from, from companies or different research uh, a group, the different group of, of research. And the last one is the application programming interface that enable integration between different systems and, and softwares. Well, uh, we showed you uh, five, five projects that we are involved. And well, the four first are of agriculture for that zero 
And the last one is uh, from Leafstock. Well, Alarat is, is, a, is a project that investigates uh, the latest advance in agronomic models. Uh, we, we design a network of wireless sensors to measure critical local factors. Uh, we designed an IoT architectures that we can see uh, later. Uh, sensors, device, edge computing connectivity, data processing, and user interface. We had acquisition of georeference spatial and temporal database of critical factors throughout the following monitoring system. Um, we develop data analysis technique and artificial intelligence based algorithms to predict the evolution of factors. And we develop the, the blockchain traceability techniques uh, for, for the project. Uh, as we can see, the, the, the typical architecture of, um, <coughs> of all these projects. Uh, we have an EOT system uh, that we collect the, the data in field, an event management system, MQTT. Uh, it's a lightweight uh, messaging, messaging protocol for uh, small sensors and mobile devices. Optimized for high latency and unreliable networks. We have a, a data preprocessor and gadget that is, is related with a web application. Uh, in this case, we use DeepInt, that is a, a, a platform developed by the group. Um, artificial intelligence service that is uh, included in, in the tipping application. And we, we involve machine learning algorithms for predictive analytics and other intelligent data processing tasks. And the last one, uh, we have the, the blockchain technology, which could be used for, for secure and and traceability. Another project is Intel Intervines. It's a pioneering research and develop project that uh, it's similar to the Talarat. And the project's pre primary objective is research and develop cutting edge techniques that, that revolutionize these fields. Uh, we can see the, the the project, uh, the analytic, analytics, IoT, the process, uh, and, the, and the blockchain uh, traceability. Uh, in this project, uh, we, we have an, AI, an artificial intelligence and deep learning application that, that, uh, um, that at, uh, sorry, uh, precision viticulture enhancement. Uh, the, pro the project is focused on development intelligent irrigation system for, for precision viticulture. And we, we can see the, the, the IoT architecture develop uh, is a key component in the development of an IoT architecture. Uh, it's the similar that the uh, the project we can see uh, before, that Alarat project. Uh, another part in the Intel Vines project is Chain Vines, that is an individual research and develop project focused in application of distributed ledger technologies, blockchain. Uh, we have the, the blockchain platform. Uh, the project involves developing and implementing a blockchain platform. Uh, that will facilitate the design and formalization of new automated contracts, smart contracts. And we have to the, the traceability and quality assurance. Uh, with this technology, binaries will be able to track, record, and validate the entire bind traceability from its origin of, to the point of, this, of sale. Uh, another project is Agraria. Uh, the Agraria project uh, investigates the applicability and viability 
of artificial intelligence with other technologies related to industry 4.0 in real solutions to define new agricultural production methods that results in Spain's, in Spain's agri-food sector being more productive, technological, innovate, sustainable and commit to energy efficiency. Uh, in this project we have uh, artificial intelligence too for, for detect uh, disease, uh, the presence of pests as neutral, nutritional deficiency. Uh, we, we can see the different different images for from the project that we use different uh, algorithms for the uh, pest disease or illness the last project i want to talk about is sosban uh, sosban is a livestock uh, uh, project it's an innovative project created to improve the positions of extensive beef in the market and ensure the the economic sustain sustainability of these farms. Uh, this is the the, the platform. Uh, I want to, to to show you a part of the platform. The platform, and the main goals of this project is analyzing and enhancing environmental and animal welfare, demonstrate technical and economic feasibility of innovative solutions and implement blockchain technology for traceability. I want to, to talk uh, for, for final the presentation. Uh, DeepInt, uh, that DeepInt is a, a platform developed by Visit Anar Institute, which enables the collection of IoT sensors data, filtering this data, uh, you can visualize uh, visualize the, the data and integration simple artificial intelligence algorithms uh, with without um, a, a high con uh, without um, yes it's for, for for all public this 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 platform uh, have different different options you can uh, update different uh, data sources. Uh, you can integrate different sensor uh, from IoT, from agricultural or livestock IoT, and you can uh, implement uh, artificial intelligent uh, like regression uh, algorithms like regression classification and clustering this is very simple uh, for for use you only uh, update the data and uh, pre-processing the data and implement a, a artificial intelligent uh, algorithms um, well uh, this is the base basically the the platform that we use for all these projects, and well, uh, it's it's all. Uh, thank you for for listening. Thank you, thank you very much, Raúl, and congratulations for uh, this interesting and uh, useful work made by uh, these two research group. I'm uh, I'm sure that AI and other technologies you have uh, you have talked about in in your presentation, uh, they this, these technologies have a lot to say in the future of agriculture so yeah. keep on working <laughs> our last but certainly not least important speaker is uh, professor oscar lorenzo oscar is full professor in the department of botany and plant physiology at the university of salamanca he's director of the research group on, on plant physiology and hormonal signaling at the University of Salamanca. He's researcher at the Hispanic Portuguese Institute for Agricultural Research, and he's author of over 30 articles published in high impact international journals with over 3,250 citations. 
He's member of the editorial board of the Journal of Experimental Botany, uh, Oxford University Press. Professor Lorenzo received the Sabater Award in 2007 for young researchers from the Spanish Society on, uh, of Plant Physiology. He was, he, he was sorry, also awarded in 2008 as a young European scientist from the Federation of European Societies of Plant Biology. He was also Michael Black Founders Lecture Award in 2017 from the International Society for Seed Science for his research trajectory. Let's, uh, let's watch a short video be uh, before listening to Oscar. La Unidad de Excelencia y Producción Agrícola y Medio Ambiente AgriEnvironment trabaja para la innovación en la agricultura a partir del estudio y la conservación del entorno. Esta Unidad de Excelencia aglutina a seis de los mejores grupos de investigación que trabajan en temas agrícolas y medioambientales en la Universidad de Salamanca. Todas las investigaciones que llevan a cabo los distintos grupos de investigación van encaminadas en un primer momento a realizar investigaciones básicas en algunos aspectos muy relevantes de la producción agraria y ambiental y del mismo modo están encaminadas a poder transferir a la empresa y a la sociedad todas las investigaciones que estamos llevando a cabo. El Grupo de Recursos Hídricos estudia una mejor gestión del agua. El Grupo de Citopatología y Control Biológico, el Grupo de Interacciones Planta-Microorganismo y el de Hongos, Patógenos y Endófitos estudian el aprovechamiento de los microorganismos en beneficio de la agricultura desde diferentes puntos de vista. El Grupo de Fisiología y Señalización Hormonal analiza aspectos moleculares de los cultivos y el Grupo de Polifenoles las propiedades saludables de los compuestos vegetales. A través de los recursos financiados por la Junta de Castilla y León se llevan a cabo investigaciones muy relevantes donde se ha incorporado también personal investigador de prestigio a nivel internacional para llevar a cabo sus propias líneas de investigación y que puedan colaborar con los distintos miembros de la Unidad de Excelencia. La transferencia de estos estudios a la agricultura y al conjunto de la sociedad marcan el trabajo de los investigadores, pero especialmente la conexión con el mundo empresarial vinculado al sector primario. Algunas de las empresas pues vienen a hacer sus investigaciones con estos grupos a las instalaciones que tenemos en, en el CIALE y en el edificio departamental y la facultad de farmacia y muchos de los resultados que estamos ya eh, consiguiendo se están eh, aplicando directamente en, en la agricultura. La unidad de excelencia AgriEnvironment diseña una agricultura sostenible para el siglo XXI que además debe aportar riqueza a Castilla y León. Thank you very much, Abela, for your kind introduction. It's a really great pleasure for me to introduce the strategy of the University of Salamanca in the area of research and innovation in agriculture. So let me to introduce our uh, excellent research unit, as you uh, have just uh, seen in our video. So this is Iron Environment, excellent research unit. I will also present the uh, creation of our new innovation lab in order to develop the private-public uh, collaboration and apply for, for funding in the framework of this uh, agri-environmental excellent research unit. And finally, I will present some cases of success of some ongoing uh, projects for digital and ecological transition, also for this private-public collaboration, and finally, also for the collaboration between uh, uh, Spain and Portugal. So, first of all, uh, this uh, excellent research unit, our environment, is um, a, a, a funding of our regional government, uh, opened a new call in 2018, just for funding strategic plans and strategic research programs that should be executed by different research structures of excellence in our region, in Castilla y León. So, our environment is one of these excellent research units that Uh, got the financial support within the framework of this regional research and innovation strategy, also for the intelligent specialization of Castilla y León. All these fundings are uh, co-funded by the European Regional Development Fund. Also, AgroEnvironment get the funding, uh, the financial support for the internalization of this research structure of excellence uh, last year, uh, last year ago. So, the different lines of research that this uh, excellent research unit is carrying at the moment is the, the one I present here, uh, dealing with the monitoring and assessment of hydrological variables for agriculture applications. 
Also, the biocontrol of phytopathogens by some specialistic fungi like trichoderma. The bacterial probiotics with plant growth promotion mechanisms. And also the plant fungal pathogen interactions is another line of, of research. The regulation of abiotic stress responses by plant hormones and finally the nutritional relevance of these phenolic compounds. All of these are the lines of research. Some of them are carrying uh, the research at the Institute for Agribiotechnology Research that is in close collaboration with the new campus, with the new agroenvironmental campus that is under building also by our university. I will present a little bit more specifically these different lines of, of research um, uh, for you to know some of them. Especially the first one is dealing with um, several aspects since this is a multidisciplinary research team that is studying the dynamics of water and also the relationship with the territory, addressing environmental and water management problems. The scope of study uh, is the hydrological processes in the Mediterranean environments, applying remote sensing in hydrology and also in agriculture. They are studying the hydrological interaction between the soil and the plant, especially under this global climate change related to water resources. The second line of research deals with the study of uh, the trichoderma fungi for biocontrol of phytopathogens. This group is working to improve the production of crops of really agronomic interest through biotechnology and also by the management of these microorganisms, especially the fungi trichoderma, controlling plant diseases. The scope of their study is the response of plant to stress, especially salinity, drought, and different temperatures. They try to defend crop, crops from diseases and also pests with biological solutions and with the support of genetic tools. Research in relevant crops in, for our region, for Castilla y León, for example, herbaceous plants, also strawberries, cucumbers, tomatoes, rapeseed, and olive trees are under, under their study. They also developed to achieve greater environmental sustainability, replacing traditional fertilizer and pesticides with new biotechnological solutions. Our third uh, research line is the use of bacterial probiotics with plant growth promotion mechanisms. This group is studying the microbial uh, biodiversity and the potential of the different microorganisms for biotechnological applications. They are using bacteria and fungi to improve either both agriculture and environmental sustainability. Their scope of study is the symbiosis between bacteria and also in legumes. They study the positive interactions between the plant and the microorganisms, the microbial biodiversity, and also the bacterial taxonomy, microbial bioremediation in different processes. The biotechnology of these process, processes applied to agriculture, for instance, to wine and yeast with different microbial, also the development of biomaterials from these different microorganisms. They also apply biotechnological applications of endophytic microorganisms of plants in agri-food and environmental sustainability processes and genome mining in the search for new bioactive substances. Another line of research in the framework of uh, our environment research excellence units is the plant fungal pathogen interaction. One of our groups is working in the genomic studies of pathogenic and endophytic fungi and their scope of study is the isolation and characterization of different genes from fungi and study their evolutionary relationships. They design new strategies for antifungals, they investigate the interactions between plants and pathogens, or they use bioinformatic approaches and functional analysis with different fungal proteins applicable to agriculture. Their fungi under study are glomerella, fusarium, and botrytis, among others and their molecular research directly uh, is involved in the relationship to crops of agriculture interest, for instance, corn, beans, or grapes. Another group is working in the regulation of abiotic stress responses by plant hormones, and this group is studying plant hormonal signaling networks and their interactions through growth and development along the life of the plant. 
Their scope of study is the molecular genetics of physiological processes in plants. They study also the seeds in relation to climate change, the molecular genetics of seed dormancy and germination, and some of different molecules as the gasotransmitter uh, nitric oxide. They also use molecular genetics during plant development and the stem cell niche in different aspects of development. And finally, they also apply the hormonal responses to biotic and abiotic stresses under agriculture biotechnology. The final group uh, is dealing with the nutritional relevance of phenolic compounds. This group is studying plant phenolic compounds. They analyze, characterize all the influence on sensory and functional characteristics of foods in plants and all related to health effects. Their scope of study are the uh, implications of these phenolic compounds in foods, particularly in grapes, on the quality and maturity of the fruit. They also study the sensory characteristics of the wine, especially the color, the flavor, and the astringency. The influence that these phenolic compounds have in the diet on human health is also under their scope. And finally, the analysis and characterization of these phenolic metabolites of different natural products and biological samples are under evaluations for viability, metabolisms, activity, and mechanisms of actions of these phenolic compounds. Some of these studies are carried out in a nematode uh, named Xenorhabditis elegans. So all these lines of research need to be validated and need to be incorporated into new ideas and new concepts. Uh, this is the reason why we created an innovation lab. So this innovation lab is involved in the validation of these concepts. It also creates uh, uh, conceptually investable prototypes and is able to develop this private-public collaboration and apply for funding. So, and this laboratory uh, of new creation of our university is led by Ricardo Costa. And I give you just a few examples of uh, the initiatives that are involved in this innovation laboratory. So this initiative is in frame of the concept of a living lab and aims to add value to the process of innovations. It is based on the analysis of problems and also proposals from the primary sector agents. It offers new perspectives for agroenvironmental development to farmers, companies, and consumers. All of them are part of an open innovation process promoted by our university, the University of Salamanca, through the capabilities of all of our researchers. The Innovation Lab is a physical space that it is located in our institute, the Agrobiotechnology Research Institute, but it is also a methodological um, concept that relies on the synergy of all social and economic actors to provide solutions and new perspectives to the agriculture and environmental sector. I will give you a few examples of ongoing projects that we have at the moment that has been case of, of success in the funding Three of them uh, are uh, different projects. The first one is related just to the ecological transition. The second one is an example of the collaboration of private public institutions. And the third one is also a collaboration between Spain and Portugal in the frame of the uh, POCTEC call. So the first one is dealing with the biological control of a fly, uh, a pathogen. This is Drosophila suzuki, this insect. Uh, affects dramatically um, uh, crops of interest in, in our region, like strawberries, um, different berries, and uh, we are using volatile plants uh, to create biofactories in order to uh, control the uh, pathogen, the Drosophila suzuki, in our, in our fields. This is a collaborative project between three different institutions in, in Spain, three research institutions of high quality, and they are dealing with the control of this uh, important insect in our, in our fields. The second project is also an example of collaboration between private and public institutions at our university and deals with digital twins and explainable artificial intelligence for crop epidemiological prediction and also fertilization management. 
as has you seen in the in the previous talk by 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 my colleague uh, my colleague Raúl, is pretty close to uh, this kind of artificial intelligent projects, and um, uh, indeed Fairwinds is expected to contribute to accelerate the digital transitions in order to reduce environmental impact, production cost, and also to increase the product quality and traceability through the use of digital technologies. This will have a direct impact on producers who will strengthen their positions and resilience, ensuring transparency in supply chains with secure and fair data exchange for, for the sector. So this is an example of collaboration between a company, NutriControl, and two groups of research in our institution. And the last project is a collaboration between uh, different institution, institutions in Spain and Portugal, most of them related to a circular economy. And this project is dealing with the business training and the entrepreneurship for the transitions to the circular economy with the acronym of Circular Challenge. So this project tried to address the needs for reactivation of the economy and also to recover the employment either in Spain or in Portugal. So we try to increase the support and advice to a small and medium enterprise that can make investments in research, development and innovation through the creation of new innovative products capable of um, having uh, safe new market demands and addressing the challenge of a sustainable industrial transformation. This project also is able to promote business training to carry out the necessary industrial transformation of different business models based on the logic of the circular economy and the promotion of this entrepreneurship, especially in the use of endogenous resources in accordance with a logic circular production and consumption. Finally, this project also will try to develop training tools and activities to support and transfer all technological knowledge to companies directing the development of business action plans for circular transformation. At the same time, a circular entrepreneurship will be promoted, prioritizing the use of endogenous resources through actions of startup accelerations. Um, with this talk, I will um, uh, have more or less introduced all the um, interesting aspects of our research, development and innovation in agriculture under the framework of this um, um, uh, morning session. Thank you very much, Chavela. Thank you very much, Oscar, and congratulations for this uh, excellent work and congratulations for the uh, primary role that agriculture play at the University of Salamanca. It is uh, worth of recognition all the effort and all the resources invested in helping agriculture to, to progress and to improve. So thank you, thank you very much. Th these all are good news for all of us. Uh, so we have finished uh, with our presentations and we have some time left for questions. And we have here uh, some questions, the first one is a question from uh, on-site audience and uh, it is for Oscar. So Oscar, sit down please. And um, the question is how can we use the EC2U Alliance to get involved in research groups? Thank you Chavela. I think it's very 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 important uh, to talk together. Uh, I mean I will we will try to to try to open this kind of uh, innovation labs uh, between among all the different universities in the scope of the EC2U Alliance. So for instance, we have ongoing projects with um, some of the universities and for sure it will be uh, very important to reinforce this kind of uh, strategies. So for us, we are open to collaborate in any of the structures um, the Alliance is um, undergoing at the moment and for sure we will try to further develop this kind of collaborations. So there are very important calls at the moment in the cluster shifts of our uh, European funding that probably we need to apply for um, and probably all together. So this will be uh, really nice to talk each other in, in, in the framework of this uh, alliance in order to apply for these different calls. Great. Thank you very much, Oscar. And don't leave us because the second question is also for you. And it is, since when does the Innovation Lab exist? 
Um, it was created more or less one year ago, if I remember well, Ricardo. Yeah, so uh, the Innovation Lab was created in the framework of the Excellent Research Unit, more or less uh, one year ago. And in this time, we have applied to these different goals with success in, in all of them. So I think this is a good example of um, doing well all the things. So we get in contact the researchers with the different companies and the strategy is uh, quite nice at the moment. So we will try to develop in the near future and also to incorporate all the different aspects, not only our university, but also the different universities in the in the alliance are undergoing. So it's a great success, success so. for only yeah. one year of yeah, you're right. <laughs> life. So congratulations. And uh, our last question is for Luis. So Luis, come here next to me, please. And the question is, how can I avoid, it's, it's a question from uh, on-site audience, how can I avoid fraud when buying Jamón Ibérico in Spain? Uh, well, uh, dealing with the fraud is a, a difficult thing, but uh, the, the correct approach is by uh, gathering information just in time when it happens. Uh, let me elaborate this. Uh, when the farmer, uh, the breeding farmer, uh, uh, produce an insemination of, of pigs, you can record it. You digitalize that information with your mobile phone, with his mobile phone. He can get the GPS uh, uh, position. So we can attest that it happens in Salamanca and not in, in France or whatever. Uh, and that information comes to the cloud and go to a blockchain. Blockchain acts as a kind of digital notary that uh, creates a digital signature of that information, timestamp it and keep it secure uh, for the time we, for um, theoretically forever. So many years later, well, it's at the, the breeding farm, but in the in the nurturing farm, it also happens like that, where the the feed producer uh, also uh, uh, records this information, is digitally signed, the custodies, and then the every every step on the on the value chain do that the and what we can check then in the blockchain when we scan a qr code when we are acquiring a blister of iberian ham or a full leg a whole leg of iberian ham uh, what we can check is that information was provided by the farmer it's digitally signed by him uh, four years ago and hmm. And all that information is, is tied together, is digitally notarized, so and is publicly is transparent, so you can combat fraud by checking this public information. Mm -hmm. So we, we can rely when we buying can, a, a, a jamón ibérico we can here rely. in Salamanca. We yes, can rely yes, on, yes. on the, okay, the, the, the companies, that, the producers that have this system. We can rely on them. Thank you, thank you very much, thank you Luis. Too. So we have finished. Uh, I want to express my gratitude again to uh, all the, the speakers, the four speakers. We have enjoyed a lot all the presentations and we have learned a lot as well. And uh, we, we want also to thank the audience, the on-site audience and the online audience for their presence today uh, with us. And uh, we hope that this is not the last, uh, the last uh, chance to, uh, to meet and talk about innovation in whatever. This time uh, we have talked about innovation in agriculture. And we have, uh, I think soon, we have a next episode, uh, a new episode on innovation. So see you soon and thank you very much. <laughs>